Hey friends, Cherie here. Welcome back to the channel for another sewing tutorial. All right, friends, so we're gonna have some fun today sewing up these lovely aprons using Simplicity 9411. This is one of their um, learn to sew patterns. Uh, if we look at the front cover, it says on here, um, you're gonna learn to transfer pattern markings, sew a clean finish hem, work with border print fabrics, as well as applying a pocket. Um, and so I picked this pattern to demo apron making um, really because I, I think this is a great beginner apron pattern um, that still has some skill building in it. Um, so it's not just a simple, you know, cut a rectangle, gather the edge, attach a waistband kind of pattern. You have some, um, you know, curved seams that you're sewing, you're making your ties, um, you're adding your little D-ring to make it adjustable. And I love these kind of simple patterns where once you master the sewing of this, you can, you know, modify things, add on ruffles, add on appliques, add on patches, mix and match your fabric. Um, you can do all sorts of things to personalize it as you continue to uh, sew and build your skills. The other thing I love about this is that in this one pattern, it has all the different sizes, small, medium through large for the adult size apron as well for the child's apron. So whether you're sewing for adults or children, you have all the pattern pieces in this one pattern that you need. So again, this is Simplicity 9411. Let's get into the details of the pattern and what you're going to need to create these aprons. So if we get a closer look here at the back, as I said, it has the uh, pattern pieces to make the child's apron and a size small through large, which is saying it covers the size range from a child's three to a size eight for children. And then for adults, for Mrs., it is covering also small to large, which according to their sizing is covering from a lady size 10 up to a lady size 20. So this pattern is covering a really broad spectrum of sizes. If we look at the fabric that it's suggesting for the pattern, it's saying broadcloth, chambray, cotton. Um, I think linens would be great. It's saying ginghams. Even your home deck weight fabrics would be great. For demo purposes, I'm gonna be using these quilters weight cotton fabrics. Uh, for apron C, it's suggesting a border print fabric. Again, it's sewn the same, you're just using a border print. And then if we look at the notions that we need, we're going to be using thread. You can pull a thread that blends in with your fabric. You can do some contrasting thread uh, if you like for effect. Um, and then you also need two one and one quarter inch D-rings for the children's apron. And you need two one and one half inch D-rings for the ladies April. If we go in a bit more and we look at the fabric requirements, you're going to need anywhere from about three quarters of a yard of fabric up into about one and an eighth yards of fabric, depending on the size that you are making. Okay. And this is all based on 44 inch wide fabric, which is exactly uh, the width of these quilters weight cotton fabrics that I'm going to be using. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at the fabric that I think I'm gonna start off with. So if you're getting ready for some fall baking, uh, fall holidays, um, you can pick something that is very um, themed, um, or you can pick prints that really, you know, they kind of, they pull up the colors of fall, but really they are working well for all year long. So that's what the teacups remind me of. Of course, this orange floral, it brings in those shades of fall. Um, but you can use that all year long. And then this pumpkin print, of course, is the epitome of a fall theme. So I definitely gonna use this for one of the aprons as well. Now I have some other projects I'm gonna be sharing in the next video um, where I'm also gonna be using these fabrics. So stay tuned, what I don't use here, I will use in one or two upcoming videos, all right? So let me uh, get to deciding. I'm gonna cut out the pattern pieces um, and we're going to start sewing. All right, so I got my pattern pieces uh, cut out of the fabrics that I chose. Uh, before we come in and start um, assembling the apron, I just want to go over the pattern uh, sheets, the direction sheets with you all. Um, again, this is primarily for people who are really new to sewing, 
Um, I want to make sure that as I'm sewing with these patterns, I am trying to point out some things that I think are important for you to take note of. But in general, my recommendation, especially if you are new to sewing, just sit down with a cup of tea, your favorite beverage, and just look through all the sheets at once, um, reading the little detail um, so you can see what to expect while you are assembling the aprons, okay? But I wanna point out here the pattern pieces. Again, uh, the pattern comes with sizing for the adult as well as the children's pattern pieces. You have your pattern piece. Number one is for the apron. Number two is one of the pockets for A, B, and C. Uh, pattern piece number three is your tie ends. Pattern piece number four is the neck strap. And pattern piece number five is your tab for the apron, okay? And so whether you're sewing the adult size or the children's size, you have a maximum of five pattern pieces that you will be using. Um, as we move through, it's showing you how to lay out your fabric. It's reminding you if you have directional fabric, how to lay that out. Okay, you're cutting pattern piece number one on the fold, um, the lengthwise fold, so you gotta remember that. The 45 inch wide fabric usually comes folded exactly in half, so you can just use that fold line if you would like. If you're trying to center um, an image or something like that, you can iron that center fold out and recreate your own fold, uh, making sure your pattern piece fits, okay? Uh, what else do we wanna talk about? And it just takes you through and it tells you here to pick your sizing for your pattern based on your chest measurement. So whether you're making this for yourself or for someone else, use the chest measurement as your guide to picking your pattern. So it's in small print on the flap of the pattern, but it is telling you uh, the chest, the waist, the hip, the back neck to waist, as well as the approximate height uh, measurements and then you look at those numbers and you decide which size pattern to make uh, for yourself or for whomever you're gifting it to okay okay so I'm about to cut out my fabric and I just wanted to um, before I do so share this with you all as well again if you've been sewing for a while I'm sure this is something that you do but for my beginner sewers out there Sometimes because it's um, the way the tissue paper is folded up, you will end up with these creases in your uh, tissue pattern pieces. And you really need to pull those creases out and preferably iron them, you know, with a, you know, if you're feel confident, iron them on a low setting with your iron just to kind of press the seams out. But at minimum, hand press, finger press those out because what's gonna happen is you know, we're not fitting too much here, but even here, you see how this is folded over here in two places? It's not as critical for this kind of pattern because you're not adding in sleeves and things like that. You're not sewing a lot of pieces together um, in that way. But what happens is you're basically, you know, your notching won't fit up if some of your pieces have creases and folds in them because you're basically, you know, you're not really creating the true pattern shape that you need. And so just, I just wanted to show you guys that. And as I continue to put up these tutorials using commercial sewing patterns, I will try to continue to mention that as well. But you just want to make sure you don't have any folds and creases and overlaps in your pattern pieces, okay? So here's how I laid my fabric out. Um, but again, the layout directions are inside of the instruction pamphlet. But yeah, I just wanted to share that. So I'm about to cut out the child's apron and I wanna show you what I'm going to do here. I'm going to use this mushroom print. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come in and I'm going to kind of fussy cut around uh, a couple of the animal wreaths for the pocket. So I want to have uh, the animals kind of centered in the pocket. On one of the children's aprons, I uh, want to feature uh, this little triad of cuties. Um, so I'm just wanted to show you how I cut that out. Now this is specific to my fabric, right? Um, but just to give you an idea, instead of doing the two little patch pockets, I want to do one uh, longer pocket. 
and I left this extra fabric so that when I iron this these edges under to create the pocket I'm still going to have these guys centered and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stitch along these lines I'm going to lay it out first and make sure it fits um, but hopefully it will fit and I will be stitching along these lines now this ends up being too wide based on the size of the kids pattern I might just do two and then just have it right in the center and then stitch down but you'll see at the end what I decide to do but I just wanted to show you that little modification just again to inspire you to play around with your fabrics and change things around to suit you and really make these aprons individual and you know a little different okay so the first step here in sewing the apron is is having you baste uh stitches to indicate where the pockets will go I'm not doing this for a couple reasons. First of all, I'm doing a modification on the pocket on one apron. Um, a couple of the aprons, I'm not even putting pockets on. And for the one where um, the the ones where I am putting the pockets, as shown here, I'm just going to do um, a tailor's chalk marking for lining up my pattern, and I'm going to lay the pattern piece back on top um, and just kind of you know look through it and make sure it's placed. But if you want to you know, do your sketching and then do your basting stitches. That's fine. I'm skipping ahead to step two, where we're going to prepare the pockets. And so I'll show you here with these two pockets that I have fussy cut to um, highlight the cute little characters from one of the prints. And so what it has you doing is, first of all, with the fabrics flipped over, we're going to, so first of all, with the fabrics flipped over with the wrong side of the fabric facing up, we're gonna come in and we're gonna fold down um, a quarter of an inch of that upper edge. If you have a little ruler, now's a good time, or a tape measure, now's a good time to pull that out to make sure that this is a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna press that down. And we're gonna do that on both pockets. So now what we're going to do is with the fabric right side facing up, we need to flip it back. And now what we're going to do is fold the um, edge down, that folded edge, we're gonna fold that down to the fold line. Just about there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stick a pin in this first one, just to hold it in place so I can get to iron it. Because the main thing I wanna do is make sure that I fold it down the same amount on both pockets. And then again, I'm going to check this with my uh, ruler um, as well. But we're gonna get this pinned down and then I'm gonna iron this down. Okay, now that we have those prepared, we need to go to the sewing machine and we're going to stitch down um, basically at uh, the 5 8 inch seam allowance. We're just going to put stitches going down both sides and across the bottom. And the reason why we're doing this is it's going to be then our folding line when we come in to fold in those raw edges of the pocket, okay? All right, so we got the stitching done on the pockets. Okay, so first thing we have to do is now flip uh, this little edge out like this. So that's going to be our um, top of the pocket, okay? And then we're gonna come in here, and this is on the, dimming on the child's um, apron, which they're small, but. I'm gonna go around all three of these edges and just fold it back right on that stitching line that you created and get that press down really good. All four sides or all three sides of this raw edge and then we'll press that top in good too, okay? That's gonna get up in there. Just make sure you got your corner all nice and good. 
Okay. So next, I'm just going to use my little tool to make sure those corners are pushed out. Um, and I might, I'm probably going to go back in there after I press this to trim off any excess bulk. But just to show you, then you're going to press that down after you do that, okay? And this is going to really depend on your fabric, especially if you have a thicker fabric. You're going to want to get in there and trim off some of that excess bulk. Actually, let me just do that real quick because I already know I want to do it because I want that corner to lay nice and flat. And just be careful that you don't cut open your seam. But we're going to get that trimmed, okay? All right, get that turned back out. You want to make sure you're really getting your corners right at a 90 degree and getting those edges nice and straight. Okay, so that's the top of our pocket. And then now what we're going to do is create the mitered corners here on the corners. So again, I'm just following the directions. Press out the corner. Fold that back. Okay, that pressed on nice and good. And then you're going to come back and you're just going to tuck that edge, that raw edge under. Get that a press, okay? And then you're just gonna do that all the way around. And this is where if you have a serger, um, you know, you could start serge that raw edge and just leave it open then um, instead of doing this second fold down, which is what I would like to do. And sometimes, honestly, I like to just line my pockets and then I don't have to do any of this. <laughs> but we are following this pattern. So. All right. So that's my pocket. I'm going to get back up here in this one little corner here because I feel like the line is not lining straight. And you do want your pocket to be square. I'm going to do the same thing on this other pocket. And then we're going to go to the machine and we're just going to top stitch across the top of the pocket before we pin it onto the apron to stitch it down onto the apron, okay? Okay, so I got the top of the pockets top stitch. I'm just going to use my tailor's chalk and I'm going to... Just do a marking directly on the front of the fabric to show where to line up um, the pattern, uh, the pockets rather. So I have, you know, my pattern piece re put on top, um, you know, all lined up. And all I'm going to do here, since I made the large, I need to use this large placement. I'm just going to mark where it goes on the bottom. So I'm just folding that line up. Then I'm going to come in and do my tailor's chalk, which is white, which might be a little hard for you guys to see. And then I'm just going to come up the one side so I know where to line up that pocket corner. Okay, so I'm going to take it off and I'm going to place my pocket. And then I'm just going to pin it in place and go and stitch it down. You do whichever method is comfortable for you, okay? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, so I got the pockets pinned down. And I would say if you're a true beginner, beginner, you can use, um, they have so many modern products on the market now. You can put little dabbles of like fabric glue uh, along the edge of the pocket to help 
uh, keep those in place. You could also come in and go ahead and hand base now um, and then remove the pins and then do your stitching if that is more comfortable for you, especially if you're a beginner. Do what you know you have time for and what is easiest for you, all right? All right, let's go to the sewing machine. So you wanna get in here. I am like just on the fabric. You put the basting stitches on, you can use that, you know, if you stitch them straight as a guide. Um, but you basically just wanna edge stitch all around the pocket. So I'm gonna start on the back check because that corner is gonna get pulled a lot as the little hands go in and out of the pocket. And I'm, just, I'm just going slowly here. I'm going to stop needle still down. I'm going to lift my presser foot. I'm going to pivot and turn my 90 degrees. Put the presser foot back down. And then I'm going to sew. And I do. I'll sew like two or three stitches. I'll back uh, tack two stitches. And then I'll back tack two stitches just because it's a corner. And then again, I'm just... Taking my time, trying to get this stitch down as straight as possible. Make sure to pull your needles out before you sew over them. All right, needle down. I'm gonna lift my presser foot. I'm gonna pivot and turn 90 degrees. And we're gonna continue. I'm gonna come up three stitches, and then back stitch two stitches. And then I'm gonna just come on up until I finish. And then I'm just gonna keep sewing. I'm gonna come up off the edge, one stitch, and then I'm gonna back tack, back tack, back tack. Alright, I'm gonna lift the needle up, press your foot up, gently slide that out, and snip off those extra threads in the front and the back. Okay, both pockets are stitched on and now we need to finish the arm hole edge. So I'm gonna get set up with the iron for that. So with the right side of the apron facing down, wrong side facing you, um, you're gonna come in and you're gonna use your iron and you're gonna fold down and use a ruler if you need to get that uh, fold down right, but you're going to fold down five eighths of an inch and you're going to um, press that down, right? And if you do the basting line as is instructed, that's basically going to be your guide for the fold under, just like we did with the pocket. I'm just, uh, you know doing it with my own visual guide here with the iron. And now you're coming in and you're folding that raw edge in to meet up with the fold and pressing that down. Okay, so you have a nice flat uh, curve here. I'm gonna pin mine in place, do the same thing on the other side and go stitch these down. And I'm going to do my stitching from the right side of the fabric. All right, so now we're gonna work on the uh, necktie and the straps. Um, so we've gone through, we have attached our pocket. We have done the turn under, um, under the armhole section. And now we're here on steps seven through 10, basically. So you have your two strap pieces, which you're gonna fold over in half lengthwise and you're gonna match up the raw edges. And then you should have an indication where you're gonna to have to um, leave the strap end open. So for me, it's this upper edge. And then this edge here, this is the end of the tie, the tie end. And so this section needs to be sewn for me. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other uh, tie end as well as on the neck uh, piece. So you're gonna sew from here to here, and then you're gonna sew straight down this long edge, leaving this one short edge open, okay? Okay, so I got the first tie end uh, pinned. 
I'm going to do the second tie end and the necktie portion, and then we'll go to the sewing machine. All right, so we got those uh, two tie ends and the necktie piece stitched. Now what we have to do, we're going to trim this corner at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to trim off some of that bulk, get any extra strings from sewing uh, cut off as well. And then what we have to do is turn these right side out and give them all a very good press. I'm gonna just take my handy dandy turning tool, drop it inside the tie all the way down to the bottom. And then I'm going to stick it, the dowel in through the other end and just push it out. And then while the dowel is still in there, I'm just going to poke out my corners gently. And then I'm going to take the wooden dowel back out. And then I'm just going to give this all a good press. So let me do this on the other two uh, ties and we'll be back. All right, so we got that. Uh, press down, just gonna snip off these extra threads quickly, and then we're going to place the necktie piece that we prepared. So remember, your tie ends are shorter than your necktie, just so you don't get confused, okay? The necktie is the longer one. And so we are now going to place this down, and let's see what step we are on now. Um, we should be on page two. Yes, we are on step 11 now, okay? And so basically it's gonna have us just lining up the top of our tie end to the top corner of the apron on the left side facing you, okay? So I have mine placed and I'm going to stick a pin on each side of the tie piece and I'm going to go and stitch right across that at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Okay, so I got that stitched down. You can see right there. So now we're here on step 12 where we're going to prepare our tab, which is going to hold our D-ring. So we're going to take this one and we're going to fold it over in half lengthwise. And we're just going to stitch along this longer seam here. And you should have put your um, markings on for lining that up. But we're just going to come in here and we're going to stitch down here with a 5 8 inch seam allowance, okay? All right, so we have, all right, so we've stitched that little tab down and I'm doing the same thing. This time I'm using my turning tool. I have it inserted just about halfway and then I'm gonna come in gently and push that through and then slide it off and that gives me a piece here to use to turn it easily. All right, so now I'm gonna press this down and uh, we'll move on to the step where we have to attach the D-rings. All right, so we have our D-rings, and the first thing we need to do is to get this basted so that they stay in place, the edges stay in place while we um, do the attachment. So we just wanna slide our D-rings in just so at the halfway point, matching up these two raw edges. And I'm gonna stick two pins in, and I'm gonna go to the machine and just base these together so that they stay in place as I position them on to the apron. All right, so we have this basted in place. Now we have to come and we need to attach this tab to the other side of the upper corner of the apron. Okay, so we're gonna line the edges up like so and get that pinned into place. 
and stitch down at the 5 8 inch seam mark. So we're going to go and stitch this down. All right. All right. So we have that attached now as well. I'm just going to come in and trim off all these extra strings, even along this upper edge. Get that all nice and cleaned up. Because then what we have to do is come in and fold this down and uh, get this upper seam finished off, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is just flip these up like so, these two ties, and I'm gonna give them a really good press right across the 5 8 inch seam line. So we're basically getting folded back. Turn it over. I just did it from the right side to make sure that there was no accidental folding over, making sure that's nice and flat from the right side. Now we're gonna come in and we're gonna get this pressed down. Now we're gonna come in and get this pressed down really, really good. Okay, so that's pressed. And now what we have to do is come and tuck this under and press it again so that that raw edge is tucked into the seam before we stitch that down. So I'm gonna come back across with the iron and the pattern directions tell you to come in on the edges and just do some basting stitches by hand to lock that into place. If you're new to sewing, that's a very good idea to do. I'm just gonna go ahead and press it really good. On that one tab side, I'm probably going to come in and cut out one layer just to reduce the bulk on that side as well. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut off some of the bulk in here by just separating that in this inner um, section of the tab. I'm gonna trim that down some, just so that's less bulky. You're sewing through in the end then like six layers, actually more, yeah, because you're folding it under again. So it's just a lot to sew through. And I think especially if you're using a bulkier fabric like a denim or a twill, that's gonna be a lot um to press through if you want go ahead and trim that out otherwise just follow the directions and fold it under and then just hand baste it in place with a few tacking stitches and the tie to side is just not as bulky so that's not really necessary to trim anything in there but yeah that's what it looks like from the wrong side and here's what it looks like from the right side. So I'm going to put my pins in place and then I'm going to stitch right across at the quarter inch mark. Okay. All right, the pins are in place and now we're going to go to the sewing machine. All right, so let's do this top stitching across the upper portion of the apron and we're going to stitch this from the right side so we can ensure that we're getting a nice straight line and we're stitching right at the quarter inch mark. I'm going to lower my presser foot down on the fabric and then because I'm starting at a bulky place I'm going to just use my hand wheel to lower the needle before I start sewing. I'm going to take my time and stitch forward like three stitches and then I'm going to back tack two and then I'm going to come forward again All right and then I'm just going to sew straight across and then I'm going to back tack at the other edge and I'm just keeping that lined up with my quarter inch mark on my ruler on my throat plate 
If you're new to sewing, you might consider getting different kind of presser feet guides. There's a quarter inch presser foot that you can get. Um, you can also just put a piece of like masking tape or washi tape uh, on your sewing machine at your quarter inch line to help you uh, better keep that seam straight. As we get to the edge, again, I'm gonna slow down. I'm gonna do my back tack, couple stitches. I'm gonna come forward again. And then right after I go the, off the edge, I'm gonna back tack again and come forward. I want that locked down really nicely. Needle up all the way, pull your threads out. And then while we're here, we're just gonna secure um, the tab and the strap, um, the tie around the neck a little bit more. And so what we're going to do, and this is in the directions, we're gonna come just above. We're gonna come just right here at that seam and we're going to do some stitches there just to lock that in. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start stitching. I'm gonna do two, three stitches. I'm gonna back tack. And then I'm going to come forward again. And then I'm going to stop. I'm going to go in reverse again. Back tack. And then forward. Okay. Needle up. Press your foot up. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the tab. Okay. Press your foot down. Okay, press your foot down, start sewing, go in reverse, sew again to the edge, go in reverse. That's it. Now we have to attach the uh, ties and we're gonna go through the same kind of procedure. All right, so now we're gonna attach the waist ties, all right? And so same thing, And so we're gonna be doing the same thing. We're gonna place the raw edge of the tie or the open edge up to the side upper edge of the apron at the waistline. And we're gonna pin that in place. And you should have little circles if you did your notching or your marking to line up, but it's all the way up at that upper corner. Let's have a look here. We're here in the directions. Um, so really here, we're showing it kind of all together in one step. So we're gonna attach it here. And then after we stitch it in place, we're going to um, turn that seam under, okay? So we're gonna pin one side, I'm gonna pin the other, and I'm gonna come back to show you how to finish the side edge. All right, so we got that attached. You can see here, I just did a stitch down here at the 5 8 inch mark. And now what we wanna do is get that side seam pressed down. So we're gonna fold the whole length down at the 5 8 inch mark. Press that down. And just do a check from the right side that there's no folding over from the right side. Okay. Now what we're gonna do is just like we did the armhole and that upper edge, we're gonna come in and just tuck that raw edge into that fold line and then fold it up and press that down. That's it. Take your time up here, get that tucked under. You can do your little uh, stitch tacking. Uh, put a couple of stitches there to tack that. 
down. Um, but otherwise, just get that pressed down real good. Make sure it's all even and straight as possible. Get the edge. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then again, put some pins in on the right side. And I'm just going to stitch straight down, all the way down to the end. Okay. All right. So we got that all stitched down. You can see from the wrong side, from the right side. It's all neat and tidy. Got all our strings cut. And now we are at the last step, which is to do the hem. So we're going to just flip that edge up. My edges have frayed just a little bit, just in working with the fabric. So I'm just gonna go ahead and trim those little bits off. And now what we're gonna do is fold our hem under. And the pattern is telling us to fold it over again, five eighth inches for our hem. And so we're just kind of repeating that same step that we've done throughout, folding it over at the 5 8 inch, pressing it, and then coming in and tucking that raw edge into that fold we've created, or that crease we've created, and pressing that down as well. The final thing we're going to do just so our raw edge doesn't peek through, I like to come in and just fold that under at 45 degrees. Oh, it's a small seam to do. Fold that under, lay that down, and then just press that really good on the corners before I pin it. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, and I'm just gonna do a straight stitch across, and I'm gonna stitch it just like we've been doing throughout the other steps, starting on one end, coming in a few stitches, back tacking or going in reverse, and then going forward to lock in that seam, and then um, continuing down and doing the same thing on the end. Go to the edge, go in reverse a few stitches, and then go forward again, and the hem will be nicely close. All right, so, yeah. All right, let's go get this hemmed and we'll be done. All right, I'm making another apron and I'm lining it. And I just wanna quickly share a bit of the modification that I'm doing there. Um, you'll see it at the end. But I just wanna show you here when I'm sewing the straps on, since I'm lining it, I'm not gonna fold under this raw edge. I'm gonna sew that along a 5 8 inch seam allowance with another piece of fabric cut exactly the same way, right sides facing. Do the same thing over here on this side with the tab. And then I have the contrast pockets on this one side and I just wanna show you, the pockets are a little bit bigger. I just wanna show you the pockets are a little bit bigger on this one because what I did, let me just unpin it so I can show you. I sewed these together by lining it and I just left an opening at the bottom to invert that inside out but otherwise I sewed all around the edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance left open about two inches here on the bottom to turn it turned it right side out pressed it and then just stitched across the top and then I came in using the corner placement as my guide on where to place the pocket since they are a little bit wider and a little bit taller and uh, did the same thing there so I'm going to stitch the pockets down stitch on the straps the ties rather and uh, yeah, you'll see this at the end when we do the reveal. All right, friends, so all the aprons are made. I made several, and so let's just go through uh, one by one and show you uh, what I made. And again, I'm using Simplicity 9411. We'll start with the children's aprons. So this is the most simple one. Um, this one just basically, I use this... Uh, kind of panel fabric uh, as the main body of the fabric. And then I just use the contrasting ties, some scraps left over from the orange fabric, the orange floral. And you can see here, I didn't add any pockets and yeah, just left that like so. I didn't put any pockets on it because I didn't want to break up this darling print. 
So that's one way to, you know, sew this pattern up. This next version here is the one I mentioned and I showed you uh, earlier in the video how I was going to create this pocket using the uh, panel of the portraits of the animals. And so I just pinned that down basically in the same position that it indicated uh, the regular pockets would go. Um, and I just centered it. So it's just one long pocket going across, but I stitched uh, down here in between the animal portraits, creating three separate pockets. And otherwise, everything else is the same. This one also is just the single ply quilter's cotton. And again, just following the directions in the sew along with this pocket being the only modification. All right, so here is number three. Really, really darling. This one is made per the directions in that, you know, I have the contrasting pockets. I went on and used the same fabric from the pockets for the ties, uh, the neckties as well as the waist ties. Uh, but what I did with this one is that I lined it, so I made it reversible. So I used that animal portrait fabric again on the other side. And I talked you through that modification as well earlier in the video. So hopefully you caught that. Uh, didn't put any pockets on the side again because I didn't want to break up this darling print. Um, but you can see here, this one is a little bit sturdier because I have the two layers of the cotton fabric. Um, and so yeah, this is wonderful and great. Um, I love reversible things, so <laughs> I think this is really cute. And the fourth and final child's apron that I'm going to share today is this one that we made together through the bulk of this sew along. So I use this uh, mushroom print for the body, the ties, the necktie and the waist ties. And then I use this contrast fabric for the pockets and I fussy cut out the little animals uh, to try to have those centered. Um, I messed up on this one, but that's okay so cute um but yeah this is a single ply one so again this one is made exactly per the directions and this is the one that we made in the sew along so also very darling okay i'm going to show you the two adult aprons real quick and then we'll have a look at them on the mannequin as we close out the video okay so here's the first adult apron that i'll share i use this darling orange pumpkin fabric and again, I made this straightforward through the directions. This one is made in a size large for me, um, and it's on my size uh, 12, 14 mannequin, just so you can have a feeling for the fit. If we look at the back, you have plenty of tie. Um, you can tie this in a bow. Um, if your waist is larger, right, you have more space for that to tie around your waist. Um, but yeah, I picked my size based on the uh, bust area to make sure that it would fit comfortably there. Uh, but you just, you know, look at the directions, the pattern and see what size works best if you're making this for yourself as an adult. And you can see here I use the same fabric for the pockets on mine. And uh, again, just follow the directions, very straightforward, sewed it together, just like I did with the kids apron that I demoed in this whole along. And then here's the final apron, an adult apron. I use the teacup fabric for this one. Absolutely love this print. This would be darling uh, to make also the child's apron. All of them would to mix and match, to do kind of like mommy and me, grandma and me, auntie and me, <laughs> big sis and me, um, you know, baking days with coordinating or matching aprons. And I just, I really like this print as well. And so same thing, let's look at the back. You can see here at the back, this is what it looks like uh, tied in the bow. And I just wanted to mention too, if you're more petite, your final step is the hemming. So by all means, put the apron on, you know, adjust the neck strap to where you would have it, and then see if you want to cut off any of the length. I'm five foot eight. This was the perfect length for where I like my aprons. And you'll see me wearing these aprons in an upcoming video. 
All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this sew along on how to make a really simple apron. I hope you enjoyed the variations that I did and that they will inspire you to come up with your own fabric combinations and modifications to make your own unique aprons. I'll see you guys back here on the channel again soon for another sew along. Take good care. Bye. Curtains, brew some herbal tea.